we're gonna have a look today at a proof by contradiction. Uh, proofs by contradiction are pretty weird because we're working with negations and unlike where we're used to thinking of things as proving you know something to be true we're actually trying to go in the opposite direction so logically there's a little bit of acrobatics and gymnastics involved but if you know how to state things clearly using all of the mathematical knowledge and skill that you've accrued over the last you know 11 to 12 years um, you should be able to prove things by contradiction sometimes much more easily than by direct proof so let's dive into this question and see if we can make heads or tails of it. Question 10 part A says, explain why every odd number is one more or one less than a multiple of four. Okay, let's start to unpack this. Uh, to start with, part A, if we want to say that every odd number is one more or one less than a multiple of four, then I guess what we're trying to say is um, all the numbers that are one more than a multiple of four, they sort of make up a sequence of numbers, and all the numbers that are one less than a multiple of four, they make up another sequence of numbers. And if we combine those two, se two sequences together, then what this first thing is saying is we should capture up every single odd number. So how can we explain that? Well, um, we can do it without too much trouble. If we say, for instance, let's uh, introduce some sequence of numbers, um, a sub n, and let's define them as the ones that are all one less than uh, a multiple of four. So a multiple of four would be of the form 4n, and one less than that would be 4n minus one, where n is some integer. Okay, so if we think of um, all of the numbers of this form, again, we're trying to do in part A, it says explain, so this is not quite so formal. Um, what I'm going to do is think about, well, what's the first uh, set of numbers, or what's the first sequence of numbers that I get out of this, right? Well, this implies that, you know, A1, A2, A3, they're going to be something like, well, I guess, you know, 4, take away 1, and then 8, take away 1. This is me uh, incrementing up for the integer values of n, and the next one will be 12 minus 1, um, and so on. I should have said this sequence does go on forever, dot, dot, dot. So the numbers we're getting out of this, the numbers that we're generating are 3, 7, 11, and so on. If we then think about all those numbers that are one more than a multiple of 4, that's a whole different sequence. So I can also say let uh, b sub n, let's that make the ones that are, are bigger. I've already introduced n as an integer, so I don't need to say anything further. But what that implies is that the way this sequence begins, b1, b2, b3, uh, what would be the value of n that would give me um, the first, you know, when we think about multiples, we tend to think, even though, you know, positive and negatives are fine, we tend to think about the natural numbers. So I guess we would want uh, 0 plus 1, that's the, you know, the zeroth multiple of 4, um, and then we would go 4 plus 1, and then a plus 1, those multiples of 4 that we saw earlier. So that gives us 1, and then 5, and then 9, dot, dot, dot. But we can then say, well, these are the two sequences that we started with, the 4n minus ones and the 4n plus ones. If we compare that, you can see it's already starting to fall apart here, right? Or fall together, maybe. I can say, but um, the odd numbers, this is, I, I want every odd number to be included here. Um, the odd numbers, I guess I would call them O of n. Um, the way that you would say them is they're 2n minus 1. They're not based on multiples of 4, they're based on multiples of 2. Um, they're the, all the even numbers, take away 1. So that implies, again, I'm now trying to um, put this all together in one neat bow. The first three odd numbers, dot, dot, dot. Uh, in fact, I could do more than that. I mean, you can see I've got 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on, which you can see perfectly lining up with the numbers we already have. There's 3, 7, 11. 3, 7, 11, and then here's 1, 5, and 9. So you can see I haven't missed out any, and I could just continue this pattern uh, forever. So what I can say here is, therefore, every odd number, because I've captured everything in this O sub N series, every odd number can be written as either 4N minus 1 or 4n plus 1 and I have a single piece of notation which combines both of those together so I can say 4n plus or minus 1 and what that implies is that uh, every odd number is either um, one more or one less than a multiple of 4. Alright so I'm pretty happy with that 
explanation and I hope you're convinced as well. So I'm gonna put a full stop there and see how part A leads on to the rest of the question. Scrolling back up. Prove that the product of any two positive integers of the form 4n plus 1, that seems, that seems pretty important. And we, we saw, we used this from earlier on uh, when talking about this 4n plus 1. These are all of the numbers one more than a multiple of 4. Prove that the product of any two positive integers that look like this, uh, where n's a positive integer, um, is also of the form 4n plus 1. So what are we saying here? What we're suggesting is if you've got uh, two numbers that are both one more than a multiple of four. Then if you multiply them together, you get another number that is also one more than a multiple of four. So we can quickly verify this, right? Um, here, here was our sequence here, uh, 159, which has our numbers that are one more than a multiple of four. So if we took, say, uh, I've only got two uh, you know, interesting ones here. If I said, you know, say five times nine, this is me multiplying two numbers in this four n plus one format. What do I get? Well, four, five times nine is 45, and that indeed is one more than a multiple of four. So this is um, just an example of what I'm trying to do. But I don't wanna just prove this with an example. I need to do this in a logical way that captures every possible case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, rather than look at some specific versions of four and plus one, I need to think about this in general terms. So I need to introduce um, this 4n plus 1 and that 4n plus 1. That's already immediately confusing because I'm using n in two senses there. So let's introduce some new pronumerals so we can distinguish these two versions of 4n plus 1 um, by saying for different values of n. So uh, let's uh, let uh, p and q, that'll be a couple of letters that can stand in for us, let's let them be our, our n's in this case. So that means they both have to be positive integers as question B specifies. So therefore, the multiples of four plus one that go with this are going to be uh, of the form, let's consider four P plus one and four Q plus one. So here's the first version of four N plus one and here's some other four N plus one. And we tried out five and nine in our previous example just to convince ourselves that it worked. Let's just expand this, right? So what am I gonna get, 16 P Q I'm gonna get, get 4p plus 4q, and then uh, the last terms just give me one, right? Now, what am I trying to get to? Well, I'm trying to show, as I did over here, that I've got a, a plus one over here, and then everything else is a multiple of four. Well, that's not too complicated to see, because if you have a look at these terms here, um, I can factorize out that four. In fact, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Put the four out there, put some brackets here. What do I get left with? 4pq plus p, plus q, let's close our bracket, and that plus one is already conveniently just sitting there. So what have I got here? This is of the form 4n plus one. This is, uh, let's introduce a new letter, 4r plus one, so this is a specific n, where um, you can see here, because r, which is this piece in here, it's made up of uh, integers being multiplied and added together, so when you add uh, and multiply integers, you just get more integers. Um, so I can say this r is also um, not just an integer, it's uh, a positive integer, because p and q, as you multiply them together, because they started with positives, so you're never gonna go into negatives here, you're just making numbers bigger and bigger. Okay, great, so uh, this is it, right? That's kind of what I needed. Um, when you multiply two numbers that are in this 4n plus one format, you get another number in 4n plus one format. 